Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Outside the Box Stories, and I'm so excited to have my new friend, Andrea, here. I'm with Andrea Burlingham uh, from Kingsport. I'm, I'm in the Kingsport office, if you guys can't tell, which you probably can't, because I have no idea what the production team is going to put behind me, but I'm excited to see it. Uh, Andrea, how's it going? It's good. I'm doing good. I'm so excited to be here with you. Tell us, you know, you said you're a teacher before we started recording. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. You're a second grade teacher? I teach second grade in Kingsport City Schools okay. over at John Adams Elementary School. Have taught for, this is my, I'll finish my 24th year wow. at the end of this time. I know. Wow. Congratulations. Know, yeah. 24th year. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Yeah. And give me the, the school again one more time. At John Adams Elementary School. Okay. John but Adams I, in Kingsport. Mm -hmm. I've taught in Kingsport. This will be my 15th year in Kingsport. And okay. prior to that, I was in Bradley County and then Meigs County prior to that. What got you into teaching out of curiosity? My whole family are teachers. I okay. come from a whole family, long line of teachers. My father was a school principal, kind of worked up the ranks. He was in the middle school, high school segment or a portion of it. My mother was a school librarian at the middle school level for years and then my sister was a special education teacher and then became an administrator also. But I just wanted to teach kids, so I just stuck in the classroom and it worked for me. You know, I've noticed that. I, I've <clears> noticed <throat> that there are, you know, lines of teachers in families. Like uh, a lot of the teachers I know have parents and grandparents who are teachers as well. Mm -hmm. I, there, there has to be something just in the heart and soul, you know, because um, I, I know people who are just born to be teachers. It sounds like you're that. Well, yes and no. I started out working for the YMCA, so I did that for 10 years. Oh, okay. Had various jobs working for the Y, and then I went into teaching and went back to school and got certified to teach. So along with that, I have four college degrees because of that, because <laughs> I had to go back and get another degree upon a degree, so it just worked. So. You are way too educated for me. <laughs> no. But y you know no. what? <laughs> so I hope you're not dumber no. after the conversation no. with no. me. I only teach second grade, so that's a time as we can talk okay <laughs> well uh you, you know this show is is all about you know stories you know in particular health journeys and uh before we start recording you have a really really cool and inspiring health journey and and i'd really like to talk with you a little bit about that you know like um you've been a teacher for 24 years um kind of walk me through when you started when your health journey really began well, um, I for the first nine years, it was smooth sailing. I didn't have any, you know, real issues. Came to Kingsport. Not that coming to Kingsport caused anything, but just the way it was. And I knew about a year prior to coming to Kingsport, I guess, that I was going to have to have um, some uh, full hysterectomy. I had already been to my gynecologist in, in, in uh, uh, Chattanooga, and, you know, we had already done a cleaned me out. Um, to get the the endometriosis out and all that and then so about a year after living here I had a full hysterectomy and so um, during that time period I had been on the pill for um, a couple of years during that time period and then after the the hysterectomy of course they you know left me on the pill to keep my hormones straight but things began to um, just be off with me it just was not right i mean i just it was I, I was having a much more harder more difficult as years went by with my my 10th 11th 12th year of teaching 14th 15th year of teaching it just became harder and harder um having the hysterectomy was a blessing i'll say that but it was after that that i began to kind of go downhill hormonally but i i say that now i can look back and tell you it's hormonally at the time i didn't know that it was a, my hormones sure i just knew that i didn't feel right that i it, things just weren't right with me they're like they had been so uh, what how old were you when you got your hysterectomy i was mm. A good question. I had to be in my late thirties, early forties when I got my hysterectomy. Okay, maybe a little bit lo older than that. Maybe about forty-five, I guess, because I would be. That would be yeah, about forty. Oh uh, yeah. Okay, so around forty-five got mm -hmm. the hysterectomy, mm -hmm. and then, you know, in the hysterectomy being a complete blessing, 
you're saying so like you lived life after that was it immediate where you immediately where you just didn't feel good wasn't immediate it was over time it just gradually I just didn't things just weren't clicking for me like they had been you know I could go to the gym and work out for a period of time and then it still didn't feel right I could you know my it just life just wasn't the same and I got into a work situation that was that was challenging at the time sure um you know, not all um, work relationships are, are, you know, are good, but it was a little bit challenging at the time. And I literally just over from the August of about seven, eight years ago, I just fell apart. I came in one, I remember it well, it was a Friday night and we had had a meeting with several, you know, important people at school and, you know, the principal and several people. And I couldn't answer the questions that they were asking me. And I just fell apart. And I came back to school that afternoon. I actually didn't leave until late. And um, I talked to a friend of mine and just fell apart emotionally. I just, I, you know, that was the end of it. The year that, I, that particular year, the students that I had, there wasn't anything wrong with those students, but everything in my mind was wrong with those students but there wasn't a thing wrong with them they were just being who they were and they you know like with every class they have some challenges that are that are presented like you have with every single class that you have and so I couldn't deal with I couldn't deal with them with discipline I didn't know what to do yet I did know what to do and you know but I I just I couldn't even think I couldn't even think straight it's hard for me now to think back because when I go back to that, it really brings up anxiety for me because sure. it was very traumatic for me. I came home on a Friday night. My husband was in our sunroom, and I just sat down in the hall or in the doorway there. We have at the time we had a dog, Tiamat, and she's just looking at me, and I just fell apart. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, you know, I was crying. I couldn't talk. I couldn't even tell him what was going on, and it was it was not good (laughs) what was it was it more because you didn't you didn't understand what was going on either i didn't understand what was going on i couldn't tell you i just know that i was sad i was upset i couldn't function at work i couldn't tell him i couldn't tell my husband robert what was going on i couldn't tell my friends what was going on i i just shut down i shut down emotionally psychologically I just shut down and I had no idea at the time that it was hormone related. I Mm. did not, I couldn't have told you that then, or I I can now, but at the time when I was going through that, I can still see myself in that doorway and I didn't think it was hormone related. I just thought, you know, that I've got a tough class. I don't know what to deal with. I've got, you know, being asked questions. I don't know how to answer. You know, I've been thrown into a situation. I don't know the answers and you're asking me for them and I don't know those answers. And what do you do? Yeah, I think that's so fascinating because, you know, I I think a lot of times we find ourselves in, you know, frustrating environments, you know, situations that we feel like we can't handle. You know, I'm interested, what I'm gathering is that you before were able to handle, you know, tough classes, um, you know, these meetings with, with, you know, people at school that you, you needed to present to or whatever. And then, you know, all of a sudden it just, it was something that you weren't able to do. Is that, was it like an immediate thing? It wasn't immediate. I, I, I can't say that it was immediate. That the particular class I had, there were two or three little students in there that had come from some broken homes. Mm-hmm. And, and they were, you know, there were some issues that they were dealing with themselves. And I, I you know, I, I just didn't know how to, I knew how to deal with them. I know how to do it now. Look back on it and say, oh, that's an easy fix today I can look back on it and say that but at the time my mind just wasn't right I don't know how to describe that other than I just did not know how to handle that situation in the that moment 10 years ago so you said you 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 didn't know it was hormonal at the time Mm -mm. how did you cross that chasm like how did um when did there start to be some answers because i i can totally feel what you must have been feel, feeling at that time in the sense that you don't know what's going on mm-hmm. you should be able to do something that now you're not you know kind of tell me how you cross that 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 bridge well that following monday this was on a friday and so i spent the weekend thinking oh my dear what am i going to do i've got this class i've got to go back to have a full-time job i can't quit working i've got to have income coming in you know i mean i you know i've got to have all that 
So I had a, a, my, my husband and a very dear friend come in and we decided that on that Monday morning, um, I asked to see my, go to my doctor. So I just took um, that day off and actually I took that following week off. And during that week, um, I talked with um, the HR director um, at the time and we determined that it, the best, term, best thing for me to do was go to see my, my personal doctor uh, my health doctor um, in here in Kingsport. So I went to see her, walked away from that, and she determined that I needed to be on antidepressants at that time. Probably was the wisest thing at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I uh, applaud her for that. That was, that was a great decision. So I went on the antidepressants. In that week also, we decided, decided that it was probably best that I take an FMLA, you know, a Family Medical Leave Act. Did not know exactly at the time how long it was going to last, but that was from my doctor. She said, you need to take some time. You need to rest. The other thing that I wasn't doing is I wasn't sleeping either. Mm. I, I went through a period where <clears throat> I'd go to bed at night, but I couldn't stay asleep. So I wasn't sleeping at all. So sleep was affected by it. Every aspect of my life was affected by this. My eating habits, my sleep, everything was affected. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it right. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't function. So uh, my doctor said, let's get you some rest and get, you know, get you. So I went on a, the antidepressants, antidepressants and I also went on, a, she gave me a pill to help me sleep at night, which was a blessing at that moment in that time. That was the best thing for me. So through that, I also went to a, um, I guess a marriage and family counselor or, or a, a counselor in town that we know. Um, and so I went to see her and I began to um, go to her on a weekly basis, maybe every other week, I can't quite remember. I went seven to 10 sessions. And it was kind of during that time period that we kind of put two and two together that this could be hormonal, mm -hmm. you know, with me. So um, my husband finally said, let's go see your dad. <laughs> And so I ended up at your dad's office and, you know, I tell this whole story. This is where I'm at. Again, I'm still taking the, the uh, antidepressants. I'm still taking the sleeping pills. I'm still doing the whole, you know, nine yards with that. And I got in to see him and we determined that through that, um, I needed to go the route of the pellets. Mm -hmm. You know, the cream, we just need to do something quick that would be much more... Um, straightforward than trying the hormone cream and sure. all the other stuff you could do. So that's what that's what we did. Now that doesn't fix it overnight, as you well know. <laughs> so you know we put the pellets in. It was probably several four, five, six months later from the time that was in October when that when I fell apart and went to the doctor. And so it was probably not until March or April, I think, of that following year that we got the pellets in is how that the time period so there was a little bit of time in there for me to go to the counselor for me to take the fmla the medication that i was on was able i was able to go back to work um february 1st and but still at that time I, you know antidepressants kind of put you in a zombie state yeah. and i was pretty much in that zombie state i didn't feel much have much highs or lows i was just just even kill everything was just even steven with me so yeah, well first of all i, I just gotta <laughs> applaud you because um you know this show's called outside the box and and it just feels like man you were you were gonna do whatever it took to to start feeling like yourself again mm -hmm. and you tried all these different things with you know success in a lot of them and and i feel like that's so much of it is like knowing that you can feel better knowing that this isn't normal and doing things kind of moving in that direction to get back to, to where you want to go or, you know, moving forward in some way. So I'm, I'm super like, I just so proud of you. That's, that is a journey. Well, thank you. And there's probably a little bit more to the story too, as I sit sure. here and kind of think back on it. Um, during that time period, you know, when I first that, uh, that day in October, it was in Friday, it was late in October. It was the end of October near Halloween. Um, and that I, you know, I didn't, I kind of went through a time period where I wasn't really sure that I really even wanted to be here in the world. Sure. So, you know, I, I went through that. 
And so that was part of the reason why my doctor was so adamant for me to take this sure. FMLA and to get on the medication that I got. You know, and the relationship that I had with my husband was, you know, pretty much rotten at that point. It was in the pits. I, uh, you know, I could go on and on, but I don't really want to because sure. since then it has improved you know, we've had a 180 degree turn from that, but it's taken a lot of work and a lot of years to get there. So this has not been something that's happened overnight. So all of this was happen science happening simultaneously for me. It shifted my relationships with my my family, with my, my father died that Christmas. Mm. He died, he had Alzheimer's disease and he passed away on um, his birthday is November the 29th. He passed away on December the 29th. I don't know why I remember that, but I do. And he, so we went through, did his funeral during that time period. So that was kind of traumatic because I was a daddy's girl growing up. So that happened mm -hmm. also during this time period. And so the, finally, when I got to the hormone, the pellets, things were not great, but things were getting better. And so I got on the pellets. I was um, still taking the hormone, uh, excuse me, the antidepressants, and I was still taking the, um, uh, um, the antidepressants and the sleeping pills. I was still yeah. doing all yeah. of that, still taking all of those medications during that time period. And it was probably in uh, a year and a half later, I think around a year to a year and a half later, that um, I finally realized that, hey, you know, I'm, I might need to be able to be able to get off of the antidepressants because I didn't want to be on that forever in a day. It's just not something I wanted. And I remember my husband saying, Andrea, you need to go talk to your doctor, not to Tom because he hadn't prescribed them, but to my regular medical doctor, mm -hmm. or not that Tom's not, but to sure. my, my, yeah. my other, I have two doctors anyway. And so I went to see her and I said, you know, is there a possibility that we could work this out? Because, you know, I wasn't feeling on antidepressants, you know, they, they make you even kill. They don't make you high and low. And I've always been a person that's got high energy and, you know, I laugh and I cut up, you know, and I have my low moments too, but I think for me, they just feel normal. Yeah. So we weaned me off of the antidepressants. We weaned me off of the sleeping pills. And so now I, I'm kind of excited because I don't take any medication except for the hormone replacement and the Synthroid for my thyroid. <laughs> I'm not to just bump you on that one. <laughs> No, that that's amazing. And, and you know, I, I think so many people can learn from that as far as being intentional, you know, being intentional with how you want to feel, what you want to be on and what you don't, what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. And, and I just love how you were able to look at all this through very difficult times. And, and, and it's, it's a story I, I hear a lot of where, you know, a lot of things come at us at once, it seems, you know, and, um, and it feels like low hormones kind of happen at that same time based on, based on what I've seen. And, and like, how did you get through that? You know, like all this stuff coming at you with your dad, you're just starting something new, you know, relationship on the rocks. Cause you know, I talked to you before we, we hit record and you are, <laughs> I mean, this girl is about as positive as it gets. <laughs> and all we've been doing is laughing and, you know, I'm just so impressed, you know, for the people out there who, you know, are going through, you know, a tough period, it might be hormonal, it might be a combination of it all, you know, what would you advise them to do? Is it just the seeking part that you can really, you know, advise? I, I guess I think it's all of the above. You know, I, I didn't realize the impact that the counseling that I went to had, and that had a huge impact on how I was emotionally and psychologically. Uh, I had a really good support system at home. I had my husband and a very dear friend that came in and would sit with me for hours on end. You know, my poor husband, he heard me say things to him that I would never thought I would ever say to anybody. Mm -hmm. And I said them. And, you know, and I don't always remember everything that I that happened to me during that time period. I just know that it was really rough and I know I didn't like it. Um, and I know that I, you know, there were many days I just wanted to walk out. I wanted to give up on this because who wants to be in a relationship like that? 
Um, but I'm thankful now that that did not occur yeah. because I have a great relationship now. My friendships are really solid now. And, you know, and I, I just, it, I guess it was just a combination of things. I began to be very intentional at going back and working out yeah. and, you know, and getting just that aspect. Post-starting hormones or, uh, or I, I post-therapy? Uh, the working out part of it? Yeah. Working out for me is like riding a roller coaster at times. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I am really good at it at times, and I am not so good at others. <laughs> hey, I hear you on that one, and you're and, not the only one. Yeah, and I'm that way with with that with my whole life. So I I can't tell you that it was post or pre. I couldn't tell you because I've been through a roller coaster on that business. It was one or the other, post or pre. It, well, it was both. <laughs> that part of it but I can tell you during that time period that I was not working out and I started working out again and I yeah. began to see you know the spiritual aspect of it you know I began to be more intentional about you know realizing the FMLA helped because I was able to get sleep and then when the sure. sleep helped then I was able to see this the other aspects of my life so that the sleep was a big factor in that that's amazing yeah and I, I do want to ask you know give us a little glimpse of you know, post pellets, you, you got on hormones. Um, tell us some of the, the differences between a before and after. I wouldn't go without them now. <laughs> There's no way. You can't convince me not to have pellets. I don't care if I'm 85, I'm going to have my pellets. <laughs> they just, it, it is a huge difference in how I feel, my energy level, my, you know, my desire to want to have friends and relationships. It's just good. I, you know, I feel like things are back normal. You know, what is normal? I don't know how to define right. normal, but... It, things are just even for me. I mean, it's, you know, I have those normal highs and lows you have. You know, things are going to happen in life where you're going to go through tough times and, you know, you're going to maybe cry. You're going to, you know, be sad on things. And those, I think, are normal, but how you come away from that on the back side of those things. And so, so, uh, so I, I do have a question in the sense, like, <clears throat> because that is so normal, you know, like we, you know, life is a roller coaster and we, we get sad and, you know, we have, you know, tough relationship stuff and because, you know, it's, it's just life. How do we, you know, how do you know when it's like a hormonal thing or when hormones can help? Just out of curiosity, because I, I truly don't know. How hormones can help. Well, I can tell you this, that at the end of, I have hormones every four to five months. And since I have been having, getting the hormone replacement for approximately seven going on eight years and maybe nine I, seven seven eight years i'm now to the point where like i just had my hormones put in about two weeks ago and i can tell that i'm on an upswing and mm -hmm. it's wonderful you know i'm not as irritable i'm not as mad <clears throat> when things come at me i don't get the i don't get all bent out of shape about them two to three four weeks before i need pellets you know, I can be driving down the road and listening to a song and then the commercial can come on with, um, I don't know, some sappy commercial and I'm in tears. Well, that's not, you know, right. you know, so I, that's when I know that I'm not feeling exactly right. And I'll even say to my husband, you know, I'm, I'm telling you now, I, just two to three weeks, you know, I'm going to be tough here because yeah, I've yeah, got yeah. an appointment on, you know, so-and-so day and, and I'll, I'll go get my pellets put in and then I know I've got about two weeks. But so it's just, uh, I've learned what it feels like. But I think also too, having come off of all that medication has helped me to know what my body feels like. And I begin to understand and what I'm feeling inside my body and that was important to me no that yeah just kind of learning okay when it might be time when mm -hmm. it's not time that sort of thing yeah it was for me it's learning how I feel in that when I know that my hormones are going down when I'm low when mm -hmm. I'm not feeling right mm -hmm. I don't respond to things in the same way I don't ask questions in the same way I know I can become much more direct when I'm not when I don't have as many hormones in me and then I find that I'm much more introspective I'm much more um, I can think clearer and you know when something hits me and I don't I don't quite understand it I'm not reactive immediately when I'm at a good level which I stay at a good level most of the time so I don't think that you sure know, it's only two or three weeks prior to sure my hormone I'm not having hormones but I also think that not being on many medications has helped that too so I've had 
Um, another thing that happened to me kind of during that time, I guess I didn't should have told you this too, is about a year, um, I guess after that, I had... I had C. diff too. I don't know okay. if, if you, you probably know exactly what that is, but it's from antibiotics and too many antibiotics or it causes the chemical imbalance in your stomach. So I had, I had C. diff and had to be very careful now about what medications I take. So that made me that much more aware of how my body feels and what I'm feeling. So, you know, all of these things hit me, you know, within a within a unbelievable uh, uh, yeah it was it was crazy town for two or three years you know and then to be sitting here telling you all this today is kind of it's exciting for me but well uh, first of all we're so glad that you're on the show you're going to help so many people with this story and i and i gotta know because you know you mentioned that just a bunch of things hit you at once and and for the people out there who don't know about pellets were you did you have any reservations like was there any like man, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. Did you have any of that or was it more of like, heck yeah, you know? I knew I had to do something because okay. I knew that there was something not right. And I knew that I wanted to get my relationships back where they should be. And I knew that I did not want to live in that that horrible state that I was in. So I knew that I had to do something. And so it, this was almost... I, I don't want to call it trial and error, but I did not, you know, I didn't know much about it until I finally came in and I talked to Tom about it. And he was like, yeah, well, sure, let's try this. And I think we had to spend probably six months, two or three times of putting the pellets in to figure out what chemical balance would, was best for my body. Once we figured that out, man, I'm good to go for life. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but, I, you know, I, and we still adjust them from time to time. I still have to have blood work done. I still have to keep that going. But, you know, this last time we, we made an adjustment going into the time that I just had my pellets put in. We lowered my progesterone going in. And it's and I can tell a difference. But, you know, it's just little things. You know, I'm not, it's, it's all goes with weight gain. It all goes with my, you know, my thyroid. All, all of this together matters. And I just didn't realize how much of it, you know, is a chemical imbalance. But I do believe, and I, I wasn't a firm believer of this philosophy until I lived it, is that 60% of it is me making changes in my life. 40% is the medication I take. I think that statistic is right. I don't know, something like that. So, you know, just because I have the hormone replacement, it's also a mental, sure. emotional desire on my part to want to make that shift well one thing i have to say and like you know through talking with you is so clear to me that like you're the one in the driver's seat here like you're the one who's taking control of your own health and you know really performance mess and dr rogers are just kind of there right beside you you know guiding you on mm -hmm. but it, but i think a lot of people can learn from that you mm -hmm. know like you're really speaking as your own doctor like someone who's treating yourself did that is that something that you learned or was that something that you did out of necessity or have you always been that way all of the no i learned it out of necessity so it's yeah. something that i've learned in the last because for the longest time i thought a pill would solve me solve the problem right. for me and i learned quick that oh no pills don't just solve the problem they can treat the symptom but they're not going to solve the problem because if i don't do something about if I don't change something, then that symptom is going to be there the next time, and it's going to be that much worse, and it's going to be that much worse the next time. Now, I have to say I'm human. I don't always live by that, but that's <laughs> – I try. <laughs> Just human. <laughs> well, Andrea, you are doing absolutely amazing, and you have inspired me and so many out here. I can't thank you enough for being on Outside the Box Stories. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Andrea Burlingham, I am Ben Rogers. We are going to end it there. <laughs> This has been Outside the Box Stories. Thank you guys as always. We'll see you next time.